in the last class what we have seen is we have seen how to do group by how to do having right if you have to aggregate the data using group by and how to use the aggregate functions on that so let's say if you have to find out the sum by a year for all the years that you have made sales for a company so let's say if you're making sales for 2001 2002 2003 and you have to do a sum of the sale by year you would be using a group by and then you will be using the aggregate functions in the select statement right and if you have to filter on the aggregated data then you would be using having clause then we have also seen what you would be using what would be the order you would be using select for all the columns from for the table where would be for filtering the data on the columns that exist on your base table then group by to aggregate the data you can have multiple um, columns in there right then you will be using the having having would be to filter the data which is aggregated by the group by and then the order by so we have seen what would be your select the order of the statements that would appear in the select right if you have multiple of them right so it should always be in the order um, that we just said now after that we have seen the string functions in the sql that is union intersect accept and union all and then the example we talked about that is if you have a grad table and undergrad table and both has the same structure we started doing the subquery right in the last not far into the sub subqueries what are non correlated subqueries and what are correlated subqueries we have seen an example of a non correlated subquery right so what we said about the non correlated subquery is if the query is used inside a query it's a subquery but if the subquery or the inner query and outer query there are two types right i mean there are two things the inner query and the outer query when you are using a subquery if you can run inner query by itself and you don't need outer query to run the whole uh, the inner query then it's called as a non correlated why because you are running the inner query without using any outer query right so there are cases when you run the inner query and you need the outer query you cannot run the inner query by itself and that kind of query becomes the correlated subquery so here i have an example just don't worry about it we haven't seen this one yet but i'm saying is this is the example of correlated query when i'm trying to run the inner query and the inner query is dependent on the outer query i cannot run it okay so we're going to talk about more examples of the known non correlated query and then we're going to jump to the correlated query okay so let's see what do i want to do now is we 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 want to see one example how to use the correlated subquery okay one more example um now what i wanted to do is go let's go to the adventure works okay so if you look at the if you look at the tables that we have in here let's pick table um let's pick the product category okay product and the product category table or product and the product subcategory table we have production dot product table so if i have to look what's in the production dot product we'll run a select on that and we just want to see the data so i'm going to do top 1000 right so now if you look in here what you have is what are all the products that company is selling okay it has the list of all the product that company sell so um now if you want to find out in the database how the classification is done each product uh, falls under certain subcategories okay there are products that are under certain subcategories and those subcategories are also further classified inside a category so think about this you have a category subcategory and then the product is inside that so the category is like the hierarchy for the subcategory and the product right it's the top name so where you say okay the category is the cycle or the bicycle and then inside the bicycle you have different kind of subcategories like mountain bikes road bikes okay and inside the mountain bikes or the road bikes you have the product for those mountain bikes and the road bikes okay so subcategory has the product and the subcategory sorry category subcategory and the product right so in here 
we have the production dot product table that tells about all the products they have and now all these products are under which subcategory so if you want to see the subcategories here it is product subcategory so if i select this one as well you're going to see all the subcategories they have so here they have mountain bikes road bikes touring bikes these are the subcategories handlebars bottom bar brakes chains these are the subcategories okay so now if you have to find out what are all the products I have in the touring bikes? Okay, or what are all the products I have in the road bikes? What are all the products I have in mountain bikes? How do you do that? Because you know, for the mountain bikes, what is the product subcategory ID? One, right? Product subcategory ID is one. So it means, it means if any of the product whose product subcategory ID is one, it will be what? That product will be in the mountain bikes, right? So if you look at the production dot product table, there is a column on the table called product subcategory ID. So that column on production dot product tells you that this product is in which subcategory, right? So if you are looking for mountain bikes, what you would be doing? If you are looking for mountain bikes, you need to say simple wear condition, right? You need to filter the data by what? Product subcategory ID, right? So you're going to say product subcategory ID equals to one and it will give you all the mountain bikes product that you have. So you have in the company at AdventureWorks, there are 32 products that are inside product subcategory ID one and product subcategory ID one is nothing but the mountain bikes. So if I ask you, what are all the products that I have in the company that is in the subcategory mountain bikes? What would be your query where product subcategory ID equals to one, right? So you can see all the products in that subcategory. Now, if I ask you, okay, can you give me all the products that are in product subcategory road bikes? What you need to do? You need to change your query from product subcategory ID one to product subcategory ID two. How do you get the two? In the product subcategory table, you say the road bikes. And what's the subcategory ID for road bikes? Two, right? So you go in here and you say where product subcategory ID equals to two. That you're doing on the product table because you have the product subcategory ID column, right? So if you see production dot product table and you have the column in there product subcategory ID, but you don't have the name in here. Okay. So let's think about this. Now, if I ask you, can you give me all the products that are in the subcategory chain? Would you be able to tell without looking at the subcategory table? If you don't know the ID, you won't be able to tell why? because this table doesn't has the subcategory name. It just has the subcategory ID, right? It just has the ID. There is no subcategory name. So if I give you the name, okay, I need to see all the products that are in the product subcategory chain. You won't be able to look just by looking the product table itself, right? Because there is no name in here. There is just the ID. So first you need to find out for the subcategory that you are talking about, what is there? subcategory ID. Once you find out the subcategory ID, then you run the query in here or you then you run the query against production dot product table on the category I, subcategory ID, right? That's why you were going into this table. You were looking up for that name or for that subcategory name. You were looking up the product subcategory ID. You were putting in your query uh, select star from adventure works production dot product where product subcategory ID equals to two. You run the query and you get all that products. Okay. So now think about this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this as a star. Okay. All right. So it's a two step process, right? It's a two step process. So what you do first is first you get is select what you're selecting from this table. You, what you do is you say, okay, give me you, you saying is where name is equals to okay let's say I asked you for the chains what are all the products in the chain so you say give me the product subcategory ID for the subcategory name chains so I execute the query you get the seven right that's what you were doing when you were doing looking at the table if I ask you for the chain, you look at the table and you give me the ID that is corresponding the, to the chains. That is nothing but the seven. So all you're getting in here 
from this table is the product subcategory ID by providing the name, right? So the same thing I'm doing with the select query now because before you were just looking up from the table, but now if you have to write the query, what would be your query? Your query would be select product subcategory ID from production dot subcategory table where name equals to chain, right? So this would be your query. So your query, you run the query, you get the product subcategory ID seven. Now you go, you get the product subcategory ID seven, you go in here and you say select star from production dot product table, right? Where subcategory ID equals to seven, right? So if you run this query, what you're gonna get? You're gonna get all the products that are in the subcategory seven that is changed. So there is only one product inside a subcategory, right? There is only one product in that subcategory, okay? So every time if I give you a product subcategory name, you have to do two step process. First find out what, first find out what is the product subcategory ID, plug it in here in the second query and then run the second query. Then you're gonna get your answer, right? So now what we have seen is with the sub, sub query, what you do with the sub query, you can avoid the two step process. So you don't have to plug in the result from the first query to the second query. So what I can do, I take the second query, right? And instead of seven, what I need to do, I take the upper query from where I'm getting the seven. Instead of seven, I'm gonna put the upper query, right? And that's what the subquery is. So you don't have to do the two step process. Now, all you can do is just run this query, single. So you're getting all the products that are in the product subcategory chains, right? So if I remove the chains and if I ask you, can you give me all the products that are in, let's say, that are in touring bikes, okay? We do touring bikes this time. So do you need to get the product subcategory ID this time separately? No, what you need to do is you just need to change the name instead of change, you need to do the touring bikes and you have the query in here, so you don't need to do anything. You just need to say, change the name and run the query. Now it's just a one step process. If you know the name, you run this query and you get all the products that are in the touring bikes. Okay, so that is your sub query, right? Now what kind of sub query is this? This is a non-correlated sub query. Why? Because I can run my query, inner query independently, independent of the outer query, right? So if I run my inner query, if it works, it means it's a non-correlated sub query, right? It, this is an example of non-correlated sub query, right? Okay. All right. So now this is the example. So if I ask you, now I'm gonna ask you one question. Um, can you give me all the let me change the table. So let's look at the table called product category table this time. Okay, product category table. So you, if you look at the product category table, what do you have? You have four categories in there, bikes, components, clothings, and accessories, right? You have four categories in there. If I ask you, can you give me all the subcategories inside the bikes? How would you do that? I want to know all the subcategories of the category bike. Okay, so you have a category, you have subcategory and a product. Okay, so before when I was explaining you, I was going from subcategory to the product. Now you have to go from category to subcategory. So can you give me all the subcategories of the category bike? How would you do that? So just first see, First look at the table, okay? What is the category ID for bike? One, if you go now where you, right, one. Now if you go to the subcategory table, what you need to look for in the subcategory table? Where, prod, uh -huh. What's the, on what column you're gonna look for one? What's the column name you will be looking? Mm 
no wh what is this one is what's the column one is in here so if you have the column in here right so if you have in here so the first you need to get the bikes product category id so you get the bikes product category id equals to one you go in the subcategory table what you would be doing in here where product category id equals to one so if you do this you're gonna get all the subcategories of your product category id one right so you get in the bikes there are three types of subcategories there are three subcategories mountain bikes road bikes and the touring bikes right okay but so if i do just select star from production dot product subcategory and if i ask you can you give me all the subcategories of the clothing would you be able to tell me from here what are the subcategories for the clothing you know there is a category clothing but why because you don't have the category name in here right you don't have the category name in this subcategory table so first you need to get what you need to get from the from the category table what's the yes what's the product category id for clothing that is 3 so you get the product category id for clothing is 3 you come in here and you say select star from production dot product subcategory table where product category id equals to 3 and you run your query so it's the same thing right so you're getting all the subcategories that you have inside the clothing right so there are eight subcategories so it's the same example okay i just want you to practice on two different tables first you're looking on subcategory and product table now we are looking at category and the subcategory table right okay so how, how can you convert this into the subquery what was what what is what was your two queries that you were running so in this from this one what you were getting from the production dot category table what would be your query you have to write two, both the queries that you are doing now so what you are selecting from the production dot product category table what you are selecting select product select product category id right select product category id and where name equals to clothing right where name is clothing right so you say where name equals to clothing this is your query one and it will give you the product category id for the clothing so once you get the product category id what do you do you go into your production dot product subcategory table right and you put the id that you were getting for clothing the id that you get three you put it in here and then you run this query right so it's a two-step process first process to get the product subcategory product category id and then pass the product category id into the subcategory table so what you need to do to make it a sub query so you don't have to two-step process you take the second query where you have supplied the answer from the first one you take that answer out and then you take the query and put the query in place where you are plugging in the value right that makes it a subquery right okay so that will so now you don't need to worry about every time plugging in and getting the value from the one plugging it in the second one you just change the name and then you will get the all the subcategories of the bikes right all the subcategories of whatever the different subcategories you want to see okay so we did on the two tables now think about this let me take this query that we have done so i'm going to close this one i'm going to take this query close the window okay now think about this so now if i ask you can you give me all the products that are in product category bikes would you be able to do that what i want to do is now 
I want to find out all the products that are in the category bike. How would you do that? Uh huh. Uh huh. Where? Okay. So from which table I will be looking? What I need to get? I need to get all the products, right? For the bikes. So in which table I will be looking for the product? From production dot product table, right? Where? What would be my where clause? To find out all the products in the category bikes. So what do I write in the where condition from production dot product table? Where right? Where product category ID, right? Because what is this? The product category ID. So you write product category ID equals to one, right? You do that. But if you try to do this, you're not gonna get your answer. What's going on? So try to see. Do you have the column product category ID on this table in the production dot product table? Do you have that column? You don't have that column in here. So see. You have the product subcategory ID, so you can find out the subcat by subcategory, but you cannot find by the category, right? In here, so you don't have the subcategory. You have the subcategory column, but you don't have the category column in here, right? There is no product category ID in this table, so you cannot run this query. Now, how do you get all the products that are in the bike? Is there a way? To get all the products that are in the category bikes, you have the subcategory ID, right? So you need to think about how do you do that. So, do you know all the sub? So, what you need to know in order to get the products, what? From the category bikes, if you have to get all the products that are in the category bike, and you don't have the category ID in the product table, right? Do you know all the subcategories for the bikes? For the category bikes, do you know all the subcategories? If you know all the subcategories for the bikes, then you can just give all those subcategories in here, and then you will get. All the products that are in the bike. So for, this is a three-step process now. It's not a two-step process anymore. First, you need to get all the subcategories for the category bike. Then provide all those subcategories to the product table. So it's a three-step process. First, get the product subcategory IDs for all the category bike, and then in the third step, provide all those subcategory IDs to the product table. Does this make sense? Because you don't have a direct connection between category table and the product table, but you know, if you know the product category ID, you can find the subcategory ID, right? We have done that, and if you know the subcategory ID, you can find all the products. So you have to go use the subcategory table now. In between these two things, so what do you do? So first, find out all the subcategories for the bikes. What do I do to find out all the subcategories for the bikes? Is this my qu query to get all the subcategories for the bikes that we have seen? So my subcategory IDs are one, two, three for the product category bike name bike, right? For the product category name bike, these are my Subcategory. Now, where I provide this sub categories to which table? I know the subcategories. To which table I put it in? I'm gonna put it in the production dot product table where subcategory ID in one two three right. 
right? So you're gonna say, select star from production dot product where subcategory ID in. What you're gonna do? You're gonna say, how how would you write your query when you have multiple values in the where condition? So you're gonna say in, right? In then parenthesis one comma two comma three. Right, perfect. So if I do this now, I'm gonna get all the products that are in category bike, right? So because the, there are three subcategories inside the bikes, you get all the three subcategories and then you are providing to this table. It means all these products that you are getting is inside the category bike, right? That's how you should be doing it. So it's a two step process. Sorry, three step process. So how would you write the subquery? So what was what was your first step? What did you do in the first step? In the first step, you got the subcategory for the bikes, right? From the production dot product table. You got you you got in the first step you got the category ID for the bike, right? In the second step, you did is you find out all the subcategories, right? All the subcategories for the bikes. So you get there are three subcategories. So in the first step, you find out what is the bike product category ID, right? Once you get the bike product category ID, you will find what are the subcategories in the bike. So you get three of them, product subcategory ID one, two, and three. And in the last step, you said is give me all the product from production dot product where subcategory ID in one two three because you have to get for all these subcategories because these are the subcategories of the bikes, right? So it's a three step process one, two, and three, right? Okay. So now where I'm taking you to with this query is sub query is not necessarily a query inside query. You can have a query inside a query inside a query inside a query. So it's a nested loop kind of thing where you can have one query inside the another with no limit. Okay. So you can keep nesting the queries one inside another, one inside another. Let's see. So how are you going to do convert these three queries into the one step process into the one single query? How would you do that? So always we start from the last query, right? So we take the last query. Whenever you build the subquery, you take the last query, right? That was your last query. So last query, where you, were you getting one, two, three from? You were one, getting one, two, three from this query, right? And right, and what you need to, what you were getting from this table is the product subcategory ID, right? Product subcategory ID one, two, three. So do you need any other column? You don't need the star. You just need to say select product subcategory ID, right? So you are getting one, two, three from this one, right? From this query. So you take this query and you replace this one, two, three with the query, right? Okay, so this is our sub query. Now, still there is a problem. Why? Because if I, instead of bikes, if I would have said, said, said you, give me all the products for clothing, this query not gonna work, right? Because it's a one hard coded. So what you need to do, where are you getting this one from? You're getting this one from the first query, right? So you need to take this query and replace this one with the subquery, okay? Okay. So you replace the one with the you replace one with your first query. So see, this is query. This is your outer query, okay? This is your inner query. And this is your one more inner query, query inside a query, right? So this is one query. This is your second query and this is your third query, right? So what you did is query inside a query inside a query. It's a loop. So you can have more queries inside that if you have like that kind of situation. You can keep doing that. So see, now I'm getting all the products that are in the category bikes. So if I change this to clothing, 
I would be getting all the products that are in the category clothing. Is it clear? Right? So I just need to change the name now. I don't need to pass the ID. Take the ID from the first query, pass it to the second. Take the IDs from the second query, pass it to the third query. All I need to do is just put the name in here and the run the query in one step. Oops. Run, execute the query in one step. And you're going to get all the products that are in the clothing. Okay. All right. Is it clear? So it's a non correlated subquery. Okay. It's a non correlated. Why it's non correlated? Because you can run your inner query, innermost query, without the help of your outer query, right? You can run the inner query without the help of the outer query, right? So this kind of queries are non correlated subqueries. They are not related with the outer query. Okay. So, and the another thing that we seen here is you're writing query inside a query inside a query. Okay. So keep in mind, you can keep, if you have like a four step table from where you have to jump from one table to another, to another, then you would be doing it. Okay. Now what I wanted to do is I have an example in the database where it's a four step process. Okay. So you would be writing one query inside another, inside another, and there will be one more query inside that. Okay. I want you to do as an assignment. Okay. So let's look what is the assignment. Okay. To practice. Um, there is a table in the database called address table, persons.address. Okay. So I'm going to, let me see. Uh, if I have in here, if I have in here, so we have just seen this example, right? So now I'm trying to see if I have that query inside a query example. Okay. So I don't have it here right now, but I can. So let's see a table called person dot address and let's try to understand what it's doing. In here, I have the address for the people in the company, right? So if I ask you, can you tell me what state they are in? Would you be able to tell me their state? Can you tell me the name of the state they are in? The state. So if, if the address ID one, this is in which state? This address is in which state? 79, but you don't know the name, right? If I ask you, can you give me the name of the state? Would you be able to tell? No, right? So what do you need to find now? You, you need to find out, you need to find out this 79 is the code for which state, right? You need to find out um, the code for 79, right? Because it's a code, uh, it's an ID coming from some other table, right? So when you see this kind of IDs in the table, it means it's coming from some other table. How do you know that? If you look at person start person dot address table, right? If the database is created ideally, or if it's a good database, they would always have a foreign key in here, right? So if this state province ID has a key in front of it and it says FK, it means this ID is coming from some other table. Okay. So if you have to find the name of 79, you have to go find that table from where it's coming. Okay. Because it's a foreign key in here. So it should have name somewhere else in some other table. Okay. So whenever you see the ID and then you see, okay, the ID is foreign key. It means it's coming from some other table. In good databases, it's always referenced as a foreign key. Foreign key means the number is mentioned here, but if you have to find the value, you have to go to the table that has the primary key or from where it's coming. Okay. So let's see. I know the table. The table is state province ID, right? So we'll be looking for a table that has a state province in it. So there is a table called person dot state province. Do you have the state province ID in here? Oh, yes, you do. So state province ID is a primary key in here. It means it's coming from this table. So if you have to find out 79, you go to this table and you will be able to find out, right? You go to state province ID 79, you know that is Washington. 
Washington. But if I ask you, can you tell me what's what is the country for it, Washington? You look at the table, and if I ask you, can can you tell me this address is in which country? How do you know? Let's say we take a different example. Okay. Washington okay so if I take this now can you tell me it so you don't know the state you find out the state but can you tell me the country which country this address is in which country this address is in you don't know the state but you would be you know how to find out the state for this country right now if I ask you which country this address is in you don't know the country name in here because it's not mentioned in the address table. So look first try to find out what state it is, right? If you go in the state table in the state province table, you look for the state ID 9. You say, okay, this is California. But let's say you don't know where the California is. Okay, you don't know in which country it is. For example, if it's some other country or some state which is you don't know this state is in which country. So how do you find out? the state sorry the country for this one okay so let's say for an example you don't know the california is in which country it says the code is us but you don't know the name of the country how do you find out the name of the country like for this one you know it is as do you know what's the code for as what's the name of the country you know it's american soma but you don't know the country name or Let's say for the Alberta, it's CA, it's obviously Canada, but if you need to find out the name of the Canadi, uh, country, sorry, right? How do you know that? Like for GB, you know, it, it's, I mean, I'm saying that if the country name is FM and you don't know what code it is for, how do you find out the name of the country? So what this is again, this is, look at the table. Is it a foreign keyed? country region code so in in this table if you look at the country region code is it a foreign key code yes it's a foreign key code right so it means and there is one more column and so see what are the columns in the state province table which has foreign key territory id and the country region code right two of them so let's look each of the table and see in which table we can find out the country so first we're gonna go to the territory table, okay? So I want to find out what's the territory for um, any one of this state province ID nine, okay? What's the territory for this? So territory ID is four. And we know it's coming from some other table. So we will be looking for which table? Territory table, right? So if I look for a territory table in here, Oh, there it is. Do you see? It might be this ta table, territory table, right? So we are looking for a territory ID 4, right? So if I expand this table, sales territory 4th is what? 4, territory ID 4th is nothing but it's a country region code US and North America. But we don't know the name yet, right? It says just the group and the Southwest is the name is the territory ID. So we will be looking to which table. So this table is not useful for us because it doesn't give us the country name. Let's go back to the country region code and try to find out if we have a table with the country region or something. Okay, country region, table called country region. So here is a table in person called person.country region, right? So if we look at country region, you have the code and then you have the name of the country ae is united arab emirates af afghanistan um then ar argentina so now if you look that code in here you will be able to find out what's the name of the country so if i'm looking for country region code is equals to fm right i would be able to get the name of the country 
Micronesia, right? So, do you see how how do you gonna get the address country? So first you have to find. So now you have to do this, and an assignment for. If I give you the address, you have to find out what country they are in. So first you have to find out their state province ID. From the state province ID, you have to find out their country code, and then from country code, you have to find out their name of the country. Okay, this would be your assignment. So you have to go from state province state uh, from the address table to the state province table and to the country region code. So you have to write a query. So the query should take what? The, if I say you okay, give me the country name for uh, address ID ID three seventy seven. You should just put the three seventy seven in the query, and it should return you what? It should return you the name of the country in which this address is, in which country the address is. Okay, so you have to write a query such that it will just give the address ID to the query, and it will give you the country, right? Okay, you would be able to do that. Okay, so you have to go against the table called person dot address. Okay. Then person dot state province, so person dot address, person dot state province, and person dot country region. Okay, all right. Try to do that as an assignment, and we'll see. All right. So the next thing that we're gonna move to is we'll come back in here. Okay. Now let's look at the other example. We have seen a couple of other. Now I want you to. Sh okay, so we're gonna look at the human resources dot employee table now. Okay, to apply the same concept on the different table. Now, if I look at a table human resources dot employee table, okay, we can write a query in here for a different example. So in here, if I ask you, can you give me all the employee who works for manager ID two. How do you do that? Or, or like, can you give me? Sorry, not that. Can you give me the title for uh, manager of employee ID five? How would you do that? I want to find out title for what is the title of em. Employee ID five manager. Okay, my question is: You have to find out the title of manager of employee ID five. Okay, how would you do that? So first, in order to find out the title for employee ID five manager, what you need to find? You need to find who is his manager, right? Who is the manager for employee ID five? How do you find out? The manager for employee ID five. What would be your query? To find out the employee for the manager ID five. Uh huh. So you, what are you gonna do? <laughs> You're gonna say where employee ID equals to five, right? So if you say employee ID equals to five, you're gonna get the manager ID for employee five is two sixty three, right? So what you need, you just need the manager ID. So you get for employee five, his manager ID is two sixty three. Now what you need to find out what is the title for manager ID two sixty three, right? That's what you find out. That's what you want to find out, right? Okay. So now what I do again is, so just keep in mind the manager ID for employee ID five is two sixty three, right? Okay. Now let's go back to step one. If I have to find out the title for employee ID, how do you find out the title for employee ID five? 
what is the title for employee id 5 how do you find out the title for employee id 5 very simple select title from human resources dot employee where employee id equals to 5 right so what is the title for employee id 5 what is its title tool designer okay so how do you know the title because you're seeing look in the human resources table where employee id 5 and look at the column title so if you look at the column for the title um for employee id 5 you will get the tool designer okay all right now there is a new concept that i'm going to introduce to you okay how this employee id and manager id is same okay so if i have to find out what is the title for manager id 263 what I need to do is I need to say where employee ID equals to 263 and this will give me the title for manager ID for manager for manager ID 263 so this is a little different see here you saying select the title from human resources dot employee where employee ID is equals to 263 so this is senior tool designer which is the title for whom it's the title for the manager of employee id 5 the manager title of employee id 5 is senior tool design engineer senior tool designer okay now what did you do you say first find out the manager id for employee 5 you found out the manager id for employee id 5 is 263 okay so manager id equals to 263 but you go in the same table and you say employee ID equals to 263 in order to find out the title. Okay, so now why are you doing? You're getting the manager ID, and then now you're putting the same ID in the employee ID. Why? Does it make sense? Is it right, wrong? So you get the employee ID 5, manager ID 263. And then you look in the same table where employee ID 263 is title. Now let's think about this. In the company, let's say, okay, forget about this for now. In the company, if I say you have a manager, okay, let's say uh, you are my manager. My employee ID is 1 your employee id is 10 and you are my manager okay in in the company each of the people gonna have the employee id right whoever works in the company will have an employee id i am your employee you are my manager my employee id is one your employee id is 10 okay now if i ask you or if i ask the third person what is the manager id for employee ND or for employee ID 1, what is his manager ID? What do you say? Manager ID is 10. So there is a relationship 10, right? So even though it's the employee ID for you, but in, in it's in my reference what it is, it's a manager ID. In your reference, if you are the manager, it's your employee ID. But in my reference, if someone asks me, what is your, who is your manager? I would say, my manager is manager ID 10. Right? Because you are the employee for the company, but in from my perspective, you are the manager. So if, I, if someone asks me, who is my manager? I would say, my manager is manager ID 10. Or like employee ID 10. It's the same thing. Right? Or I can say employee ID 10, but he is my manager. So I would say, my manager is 10 right so in 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 all the employees in the reference to the company are employee id but it's if i talking about my reference you become the manager right make sense so that's why that's the same thing i'm doing in here that employee id 5 
has a manager ID 263, but he is nothing but what? He is an employee to the company. This guy is manager for five, but he is what? He is nothing but the employee to the company. So this is nothing but the employee ID, right? So that's why in the next step you say where employee ID equals to 263. Okay, so manager is nothing but what? He is an employee to the company. So if you have to find out anything about this manager ID, where you would get when you say employee ID equals to 3, employee ID equals to 185. Okay, so this manager ID is nothing but a employee ID, but it is referenced in here. So you know who is the manager for employee ID 2, who is the manager for employee ID 3. Does it make sense? Okay, all right. So keep in mind, I mean, these kind of things you would not know by yourself. Okay, someone would be there who has designed the database would be able to tell you or it should be documented somewhere in the documents okay you you so let's say when you go for the job you don't have to find these kind of things by yourself there should be things should be documented or someone would be telling you if you're going in the company there should be a document that would tell you about the database structure there would be an uh, entity relationship diagram about the database that will tell you what are the relationship between the tables okay if you read through documentation, you would get these kind of informations. Okay. All right. So is it clear why I was doing this to get the title for employee ID 5 manager? Okay. So employee ID 5 manager is 263. And I say, give me the title for employee ID 263. You get the title. Here's a senior tool design engineer. So I see senior tool designer. Okay. Any question? Uh, yes, it's non correlated So what you need to do, you need to now now make it a subquery out of it. What you need to do, you need to replace two sixty three what two sixty three with with our first query, right? So you're gonna replace the star with the manager ID because that's what you need for employee ID five, the manager ID, right? You get that and you plug it in the query. Okay, so now. This make this makes your subquery, right? So you're gonna get the manager information for employee ID five. Okay. So now if it's a how do you know if it's a non-correlated subquery? You run the inner query and you can run it by yourself. I mean by itself, not yourself. You can run the query by itself. It means it's a non-correlated subquery. Yes. Yes. The query should always go inside a bracket. The subquery should always be inside a bracket. Okay. It's always a round bracket. You have to put the query inside the round bracket. Okay. If your query returns multiple values, so let's say in this case it's not possible, but if your query returns multiple values, you have to use the in, right? Because if you have the multiple value values in the where condition, you will be using in clause, right? Okay, all right, go back to our class notes, okay? So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to find out the title. Now, if I ask you this question, this is our next question, what is what if I want to find out title, I want to find out the manager title for employee who have max of vacation hours. So let's say HR came to you and they said, okay, we want to find an employee who has max of vacation hours, okay? And then we need to know the name of the manager or we need to know the title of the manager, okay? So first, I mean, your requirement is from the HR that we want to know the manager title for employee who has max of vacation hours. What would you do? So this query is now dependent on the things that we have learned in the previous classes. We have seen the aggregate functions, right? So this query is dependent on the aggregate function. And the aggregate functions we ha we had seen in 
one class before the last one right so now you have to think about what you have learned in the previous classes plus today combine those things together would give you the answer so how do you start Uh huh. Select right. What you need to find out max of vacation hours, right? Yep. So you're gonna say max of vacation, right? From yes, which table? Yep. Human resources dot employee, right? So we have some, okay. So now you get the max of vacation hour is 99. Okay, what you need to know next, you need to know who are all those employees who have this max of vacation hour. So how do you find out employee who has max of vacation hour? What would be your next query? You need to say select star from human resources dot employee. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm hmm. Where? Yes. Where? Yep. Where? Vacation hours. Yep. Perfect. So you now you know because first you find out the max of vacation hours and now you are finding out who are those employees who had who is having vacation hours equals to ninety nine. So you go in here. You see. Okay. Yes. These are the three employees. Who have vacation hours equals to 99. Who are those employees? Employee D 109, 179, and 224. So now you know these are the three employees who have max of vacation hours. Okay. Now what do you need to know? But are you looking for the employee information? No. You're looking to find out the title of the manager for these employees. Right? Title of their manager. How do you find out the title of their manager? We just seen, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. right. Human resources dot employee. Where? Yep. Yeah. Uh huh. Right. Where employee? Right. Yep. Perfect. Two, two, four. Right. Very good. So you're gonna say select star from human resources dot employee where employee ID in one zero nine one seventy nine and two two four. Okay. So. Oops. 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 No. What you would be saying? You need to find out the title for the manager. What would be your? If you want to find out the information for these employees manager. What you need to know? You need to find out the manager's information, right? Who is the manager for employee ID 109? There is no manager for him, right? Who is the manager for employee 179? 38. Employee ID 224, who is his manager ID? 64. So. All we know is only two of the employee has manager and the third is the CEO itself. So you're gonna say where 30 where employee ID in 38, comma 64, right? That's two. How do you gonna handle the null? Because you want to include the CEO. What says manager ID is null? So you're gonna say and sorry, not and or employee ID is null right perfect so because you have three values for manager id right null 38 64 so where our em employee id is null our employee ID is this right either of these condition is true give me that so what you're gonna get this is the manager title for this is the title for the manager okay so you're not gonna get Employee because there is no employee because he has not no manager ID so that's why you're not getting it 
okay because he is the, he, he has no manager so that's why you're not getting the information for the ceo because he itself is the boss of the company so the title for the employees 38 and 64 who has max of vacation hour their manager title is production supervisor wc50 and wc10 make sense right okay so what you're going to do to the manager you need to say the title for the employee who have max of vacation hour is these two titles okay these are their manager's title now just convert this query into sub query remove 38 and 64 where are you getting where you are getting 38 and 64 from from this query right so what did you select from this query manager id right so you're going to take the this query manager id you plug it in here i'm telling you step by step process to do it okay for the subquery so you you have to practice this way don't try to write the subquery in one chart you it's when you are practicing the things when you are working on subqueries for the first time or the second time if you try to think about okay i'm going to write the query in one step i don't need to write like queries one by one i, I would be able to write in you know like one go very difficult always try to break your questions into step by step like i'm doing it in here so i brought i break the question in three steps find out max of vacation hours find out who employees is having that and then find out the manager title so first step step two step three you do it in step individual step and then you merge all those individual query into the sub query that's the way you would be doing it if you try to think oh let me write the sub query directly I'm going to do it in the one step. Very difficult to think about. Okay. So initially you would be doing this, but once you get used to it, you could become expert about writing sub queries. You would be able to do directly. You don't need to write in three step and like replace the values. Okay. So now you did this, you, you converted the, you took the last query, you replace 38 and 64 with the query from where you're getting the values. Now, where are you getting the 99 from? You're getting the 99 from select max of vacation hour, right? From this one. So you're going to replace 99 with the sub query. Oops. Okay. All right. So now, even if now the vacation hours would be changing, you don't need to worry about. So let's say this is the monthly report that you have to give. The information of the manager for employees who have max of vacation hours. You just come in and you run the query. If the vacation hours are changing, maximum vacation hours for the employee, you don't need to worry about. This would be always correct. Right? You just run the query every week. You get the report. And then what you can do is you right click in here. You say, you see the save result as, you can save the result as an Excel and you can send this Excel file to the HR. Okay. to the csv file you can save and you can send it so you can save it in the file as a csv which will which can be opened in the excel and then you can send the report every week to hr kind of thing or whoever needs it okay so you don't need to do this three step process what we were talking about every time just run the query and good to go so this these are very simple queries when you're going to have in the real time you're going to go you would be working on like so many queries. It, this query would be huge, okay? Then it would be a, then it would be more easier. So you just save the query. So if you have to save the query, what you can do? You go in the file and you save the query, right? Uh, save query, okay? So you save it on your desktop and every time you come, you open the query, you run it, okay? All right, now what's the disadvantage of having the sub queries? Now think about this. What I'm leading you to is our next topic that would be starting one class after. But here, what is the info? What's the information that manager cannot see? There are a couple of information. They see. They know the information about the manager. The, the, all, the all the information in the two rows you see is about manager. Anywhere do you see who the employees are? So let's say if if this is the manager ID, right? 38 and 64 right these are what these are the manager id 38 and 64 
what about if the manager id 38 and 64 has 10 employees underneath them manager id 38 has 10 employees under them and only one employee has the max of vacation hour would the hr would be able to see who is the employee who has the max of vacation hour no because in here you just see the information about the manager you don't see the information about the employee who is the employee having max of vacation hour under this um, manager you don't know that i mean they just asked the information give the manager title for the employee who has max of vacation hour but let's say when you send the report they come back and they say oh we need to know the employee information as well who are the employees because we see the manager id 38 has 10 employees under them and we want to see both of the things we want to see the manager detail employee detail how do you do that because you don't see the employee detail in here right the employee detail is in this step right so when you run this step you get the employee detail the employee is the 38 manager id the employee is 179 but think about if this 38 has 10 employees in, in under them how the hr would know we are talking about employee id 179 so with the sub query that's the disadvantage you cannot show the information that is returned by the sub query okay so the detail is in here for the employee so you cannot show the detail from the sub query to the outer query okay you cannot show the employee information to the outer query that's the disadvantage okay so you cannot show the employee id 179 and 224 which is coming from here you cannot show them okay so the inner query has it in the inner query has it but you cannot show this information to the outer query okay so if you run this query all you get the information about the manager you don't know the uh, employee id for manager id 38 what's the employee id is it out of 10 who is the employee so that's the limitation of the sub query okay you cannot pass the information from the inner query to the outer query okay did you understood the limitation okay i mean it's useful what i'm saying is you need to understand the limitation as well what you cannot do the limitation is you cannot pass the information from inner query to outer query you cannot pass the information or i mean you cannot show not you can pass the information but you cannot show the information from inner query okay right you cannot show the information from the inner query you cannot select the columns that are returned by this okay so that's the limitation so how to overcome this limitation in sql if they say okay we want to see the manager as we need to see the employee as well so one class after this one uh like second class second class from now we're going to see the joins and in the joins we can overcome this limitation okay all right so do you see how do we started with the aggregate functions how we switch to the sub queries by seeing the limitations of the aggregate functions that you cannot see the information about the employee when you are doing the aggregate functions we, we jump to the sub queries now we are jumping from by seeing the limitations of the sub queries from sub query to the joins okay we're gonna do that so that's how we we're trying to build up one on the other one on the other which thing you would need to use when if you know the limitations you know you cannot use the, that this query so if you know okay if i do the sub query with this one and if i need to information from the inner query it's not a good choice to use the sub query you would be using join but if you don't need the information from the sub query you can use this one right okay all right so but still we have to do the non correlated sub queries so that's why i was saying in the next class we're going to go over the correlated sub queries um any questions before this okay all right so let me go back so we have seen lots of example today um okay this would be your assignment question the next question is assignment the assignment question is
so still we are on the sub query but this is just for the assignment to practice more sub queries i want you to find the name of the manager who have average vacation hours greater than 50 accrued by manager's employee now what i'm seeing in here i'm seeing in here is you have to so let's say each employee has manager under them right employee id 30 uh, manager id uh, hold on let's go back to our this example where i say employee id equals to or let's let me do this manager id equals to 38 very good so let's see in here now what I'm saying is this manager ID 38 has how many employee ID how many employees 12 right so you have to find out all the managers whose employee vacation R average is greater than 50 so if you have to find out the average vacation hours for manager ID 38, how would you do? If you have to find out the average vacation hours for all the employees who are working under manager ID 38, how would you do that? You need to find out the average vacation hours for the employees who are working under manager ID 38, who are working under this manager. How would you do that? All you need to do is you need to sum up all these vacation hours and divide by 12, right? This would give you the average vacation hour for the manager ID 38, right? How, how would you do that using the aggregate function? You would just say average of vacation hour, right? This would give you the average vacation hour for the manager ID 38. Right, you don't need to sum and divide by number of employees. You just say use the aggregate functions. So the average for the manager ID 38 is 93. Is this greater than 50? Yes. If it's greater than 50, you want to find the name of manager or the manager ID or the name of the manager. Okay, you have to find the name of the manager. If it if this comes greater than 50, so let's say we take one more example. We take 12. Okay. So if you get two, do you want to find the manager name? No, you only want to find the name of the manager if the average vacation hour is greater than 50. So you don't want to find out the manager, right? Yep, perfect. Yep, so you don't need to find out the name of the manager in this scenario, okay? All right, so where do you find out the name of the, so I gave you the hint how to do it, okay? You have to do it for all the managers. I just showed you one, one manager ID like 12 and 38 but you have to do for a whole table all the manager ids in the table so think about how you're going to use the group by how you're going to get filter the data uh, using the having and then once you do that you have to find out the name of the manager id okay so it's going to use the concept from the last class group by from the previous class that we have seen that is um, aggregate functions and then we have seen the having so you have to use that as well and then you have to use the concept of the subquery on top of it okay so where you can find out the name of the manager so think about this if i have to find out the manager id for 38 which has greater which has vacation hours greater than 50 right so if you have to find out If you have to find out the name of this manager ID, how do you find out? You say employee ID in 38, right? You say employee ID in 38. Where do you have the name of the employee? In which table? Do you remember in one class before we have seen the name of the uh, employee? In the person.contact table, right? So you have person.contact. What 
column do you have contact id in here right and in the human resources dot employee you have the contact id so the contact id for employee 38 is 1065 right so what you're going to look in here where contact id is equals to 165 right so the name of the person is june cow that's the name of the manager okay that's what i want to know that's what you have to get from the subquery so you have to find out all the manager ids then you have to find out their contact id and then you have to pass the contact id to this table to get all the manager's name okay it's going to be long query right all right so all right so that's from this one okay so i so try doing all these three questions that i asked you to do it for the person address right and then for this one for the person dot contact okay all right so now let's see if we have time to start the new thing yeah we, we can see one short topic now okay and then we can um, finish the class do you remember how do we used to do the table uh, the column alias that we have learned in the second class or the third class right how you used to do the column alias right so the co column alias is nothing but when you say select um do the select star from human resources dot employee right select star from human resources dot employee now let's say if we have to um see only uh, employee id and their title so what do you do you select the column employee id comma title right you do this you run the query now let's say when you're showing this report to the business people and they they don't like the they want to see the name or they know in the company it's called employee number you have to alias the column how do you do alias you say s and then yep right perfect so you say employee space number and you're going to put in the square bracket so that's how you do alias as employee number right so you're getting the name of the column as employee number so what did you do here you alias the column as an employee number instead of employee id so the same thing you can do with the table as well you can alias the table as well okay you can alias the table as well now how do you alias the table so this is your table which is long name right human resources dot employee you can just say in here as and in the short you want to call it as an e in your query okay so this alias column alias is more for to show the user okay what you want to show the user the column alias the table alias is more for you when you're writing the query the table alias when you say now this table human resources dot employee will be called as e in your query now okay so why you are doing this is to make your query uh, look better and to use this alias name inside your query so it has nothing to do with the users who are going to see the data but this is more for you to handle the query clean okay we're gonna see how we're gonna use use the aliases okay so i i rename i name the table as e in my query okay now let's say when i say where i i say okay i need only employee id is greater than 500 oh sorry greater than 100 okay if i run the query now what i can say is this column is coming from which table from human resources dot employee or it's also called as an e so you can say where e dot employee id okay so when you have one table okay you don't need to mention the name from which table it's coming but what we're going to see is when we're going to go through 
the correlate subqueries we are going to use multiple tables together and that time it would be easier to alias the table and then in here put the name of the table as e.employee ID. so we'll know if we have more than one table in the query from which query this column is coming from which table the from which table the column is coming okay <coughs> what if you don't alias what you need to do if you don't alias what you need to do then you need to use the whole name you need to say human resources dot employee dot employee id which one is better the first one or the second one the first one because you don't have to every time say human resources dot employee dot employee id human resources dot employee dot manager id right so that's why this is when you do the table alias it's more for an internal purpose writing the query to make it look good clean okay so you don't have to spell out the full table name every time okay so did you understood the table alias okay so the table alias like you said in here in in the you want to do star okay what you can do is either you can do star or you can do as e dot star as well it's one and the same thing you're saying give me all the columns from the table e okay so think about if you have more than one table in your query and you do the star it will bring all the columns from all the tables you have in your from clause okay but let's say you want to bring only column from the you human resources dot employee what you need to do you need to say e dot star so it will not bring the column from all the tables it will just bring the columns from human resources dot employee when you say e dot star okay so when you have multiple tables in your query if you say star it's different than e dot star okay is it clear difference between e dot star and the star we're going to see more when you're going to go into the joins in the uh, correlate subqueries okay but just think just keep in mind that how to do the table alias and why we are doing it just to shorten the table name so we don't have to say the full table name every time okay <coughs> excuse me okay all right i think that should be enough for today try to do the assignment that i have uploaded on the website okay so you're going to do the assignment for there is a group by assignment and there is a subquery group by assignment okay so the group by was for the previous class and and then the subquery assignment is for the today's class so start working on the subquery assignment okay or <laughs> all right okay so thank you um i will see you in the next class Thank you. Bye-bye.